It is common knowledge that Williams are slow, and that's been the case for a few seasons now. As a matter of fact, Williams being last in the constructors is the only guaranteed thing at the start of a season besides the second Red Bull driver getting fired. I'm joking, I genuinely believe that Haas will be the slowest this season. But today's focus is on Williams, and more specifically the question, will Williams ever win championships again? Frank Williams formed the Williams Formula 1 team back in 1997, when Kimi Raikkonen was minus two years old. The team's first entry was the Spanish Grand Prix, and since they have won nine Constructors Championships in 1980, 1981, 1986, 1987, 1992, 1993, 1994, 1996 and 1997. Furthermore, they've won seven Drivers Championships, so it's certainly safe to say that they were a very successful team, until about 2005, when Montoya decided to do an impression of my ex-girlfriend and head out. In 2006, we saw a young Nico Rosberg line up alongside Mark Webber for the team, but it wasn't anything spectacular by any means. Ferrari and McLaren were the dominant forces in 2007 and 2008, and obviously Braun GP won the championship in 2009. Williams have been further off the pace than Alessio Deleda for a while now, which is a concern especially considering how dominant they were in the 80s and 90s. This takes us to Spain 2012, where Williams scored their final P1 to date, with the legend Pastor Maldonado. 2013 saw Valtteri Bottas 0.5, 2014 saw, uh, a semi, and 2015 was bearable. Credit where credit's due, 2014 and 15 were good years for Williams. Not quite Mercedes good, but at least they were quicker than the Red Hoover with two aging pensioners. 2017 onwards is where it began to go downhill, and a genuinely quick question, do you remember Williams in 2018? You know, Sergei Sorokin and Lance Stroll? They were so irrelevant, I genuinely can't remember anything they did. Yeah, they came last in the championship, which resulted in the death of the nicest title sponsor and livery combo on the grid. We know what it looked like in 2019, however, with that eyesore of a livery. To be honest, it was one of those you either hated or loved, or just didn't care. The lack of the Martini sponsor wasn't awful for the team, uh, since they had a new one. It was Rocket, spelt with an I, because they were just so cool. This was until they folded like Sky Wi-Fi at the start of the 2020 season, leaving Williams with a food company, which I previously thought was soap. This left the team's financial situation in about as good shape as the hospitality sector. The 2020 Williams lapped slower than a 2014 one litre Seat Mi Toka, leaving it P10 in the constructors. Again. This brings us to present day, where as of writing this script, Britain is in a lockdown and I've just hit 2k subs. On 21st of August 2020, Williams was purchased by US investment group Dorilton Capital for 152 million euros. This settled the team's financial situation, however I personally consider this the end of the original Williams F1 team. With Claire Williams' departure, this is the first time that the team isn't under Williams' leadership. So how well they will do from now on is very much dependent on Dorita. Uh, sorry, Dorilton Capital. So who on earth are Dorilton Capital? Dorilton Capital is a small American private equity firm where they, and I quote, work actively with existing management teams, recognizing that long-term business success is the result of a team effort. Dorilton views its role as providing additional capital for acquisitions and growth projects and support you, you, and expertise you, you to take its companies want, to the next you. level. So what does all of this mean? They're essentially investing in the team to bring it back to success. I think. I don't know, the website is about as detailed as my GCSE Spanish mock. So why is this important? Well, it would be very profitable for Dorilton to return the team to success, so we may see a vast improvement in Williams' performance. Making an F1 team successful isn't as simple as F1 2020 my team. I must admit, however, I am worried that the departure of Claire Williams may lose the spirit of the team. Yeah, it's largely still the same team, but they're now owned by an American company who also owns a few food and health companies, but I'm not really sure. I think that the 2021 season could be a good indication as to their potential progress. It's also easy to forget the money that Latifi's bringing in. But then again, it's also easy to forget Latifi. I'm joking, and in all honesty, Latifi is a better driver than people give him credit for. Yeah, he's no George Russell, but he's exactly what Williams need. Daddy's cash with the ability to be on the pace. So this brings us to the question, will Williams ever win championships again? The short answer is no. And the long answer is uh, also no. I believe that the team could potentially challenge the midfield again in the near future with Haas assuming the role of backmarker. In the next few years, after Russell sods off to Mercedes, I think we could see Nick DeVries as the 
the team's first driver, which would genuinely be a good thing. With the new regulations arriving to the sport, whenever they decide to arrive, we could see Williams challenging for podiums here and there. But why no championships? I just don't think that the team have the facilities to create a championship winning car. I don't think you have the facilities for that big man. Let's be real, Ferrari won't be busted for long and Red Bull and Merck will probably stay on top, with hopefully the occasional company of McLaren. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see them challenge for the constructors again, but I just don't think that Dorilton will achieve that. And if they do and this video ages terribly, then fantastic. But in all honesty, I do not think that Williams will ever be championship worthy again. Anyway, as always, they are just my opinions. Please let me know yours in the comments below. What are your personal thoughts on the matter? Also, I want to say a big thank you very much for 2,000 subscribers in under a month. This growth is just incredible and the support has been fantastic. So yeah, thank you very much to every single one of you who took the time to turn that red button grey. You've all helped a ton. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I will see you all in the next. But until then, take care.